developing a vision to be the best through collaboration. Um, it's an interesting one. You hear a lot in terms of you go on for, for TED speeches and listening to some of the talks earlier on this morning about uh, the how, the what, the why. But we start off with what, what we're about. And what you want to be is the best. If you seek to be anything less than the best, um, if you set a goal to be mediocre, you will be mediocre. And that's why in sport, in life, in everything that we do in here today, um, we always talk about being the best. There's no point aiming low, because aim low, you'll hit every goal, and you'll never reach what your best can be. But it's important when, <clears throat> if you forgive me, important when you talk about being the best, that is actually, you look at yourself. It's the best that you can be. We're in Wimbledon. You look at uh, the, the Wimbledon Championships. How many people can actually get to be there? How many people can play for England in rugby? How many people, people can be at the top of their sphere in any walk of life? Not many. But what you can do is you can maximise what you are. And it was quite interesting earlier on. I listened to the first hour of your, your talks and listening to Will and Ken. I think it was Will talking about the rugby. His experience had been here. His experience had been with his peers. His experience of actually going away and playing representative rugby and understand that actually there was a greater bond between the people that were here in this, in this school because he was playing with his friends and they were able to maximise what they were. What was his experience when he went away? His experience is one that actually people had different agendas. They wanted different things from their time with England, with, with whatever county you're playing for. That's what they wanted. So there was an air of selfishness. Well, that's life. And that's the reality of top-level sport. It's the reality in every walk of life. People are inherently selfish. And that's why you have to look at developing a vision that every single person can buy into. Because if you don't have that sort of collective vision, if you don't have an understanding of what part you play in that vision, then there'll be nothing. There's a very famous, and you've all heard it because you're all very learned people, as I, as I heard this morning. Um, a, a, in terms of John F. Kennedy uh, going into NASA and he went to the janitor and he said, what's your job here? And the janitor replied, as you've all heard, my mission is to put a man on the moon. The janitor. Every single person understood their role within the organisation and their role was for one thing. And that's the same. I'd love to think that I was bright, intelligent, uh, all these things that I have knowledge of everything that I do. I don't. I'm not a psychologist, I'm not a medic, I'm not a physiotherapist, I'm not a biomechanic, I'm not a conditioner. There are so many things that I'm not, and if I don't have those people with me, then we're nothing. I have to have an understanding of what they do, but every single person in, that, in the organisation has a role to put our players onto a pitch to perform at their best. And everyone has to understand their role in life. When I was a kid growing up, back in Ireland, uh, I used to look at the school team going out on the pitch, and I think that's what they did. They just rocked up and ran out and they played. And there's nothing to do with that. And you understand that when you get there. The amount of work, the amount of preparation is huge. So actually developing a vision, developing a shared vision is so important. I could stand up in front of a team, in front of you, and say, this is what I want from you. Would you buy that? No. Why would you? You have to actually be part of the process of setting that vision. Um, it doesn't mean you'll get there overnight. It doesn't mean that it'll just happen. You have to continually strive and work. And that's when you say, well, actually, what is that vision for? The vision of being the best? It's because you're all the time. You'll never get there. We all have uh, great parentage and, and people to look back on. And my father, is a huge influence on me. And he said, when I was a, a young player, he said, retire when you've played the perfect match. But he said, you'll never retire. You'll never play the perfect match. You'll always strive to be the best. So when you're actually bringing that vision together of where you want to be, what part does collaboration play? What can I learn from other spheres? Nothing or everything? Can you freshen up what you're about by listening to other walks of life? 
not necessarily what would rugby and theatre have in common? Well, sport and rugby and team sport is about communication. How do I communicate? How do I listen? How do I hear? Everything that you're about, how do I project myself? How do I talk? How do I inspire? You can learn that from theatre. We, for just something different, uh, <clears throat> actually trained a number of our team to do stand-up comedy. It was bloody awful. <laughs> but why did we do that? And them understanding why did we do that, we did that so they got more confident in the most alien environment they could do. Go down to a local pub and deliver a five-minute minute comic session. But they did it because they understood that this was part of their communication. Collaboration, psychology, understanding that I've lost 50% of the people I'm speaking to because you don't learn in the way that I speak or you can't understand my croaky Irish accent. <laughs> understanding that, well, how do you do that in terms of psychology, in terms of profiling, and understanding what that profile is? So when I think of that team that just runs out into the pitch, the team is so much more than that. But it's a willingness to embrace that, for them to understand when we're talking about the, the how, the what, the why. You start off with what that's about, how we're going to get there, how are you going to make sure that you're going to be the best. All these little things will make you better, all the tiny percentages. We were just chatting beforehand, uh, at the end of the season I went over to America, of, of last season, um, went over to the Philadelphia Eagles, very, very fortunate to be allowed in there for a couple of days, and what do they do before every single meeting? They played music. They played music to open the neural pathway. I read the study when I was over there. So before every team meeting, just as the coach started to speak, the music went off. It wasn't rave, it wasn't hip hop. It was just nice and easy music. A little thing that might make a big difference. And that's what you're always looking for. So how do we collaborate in sport? We collaborate by coming to events like this, by listening to other people. You collaborate by looking at where you can take advantage of little marginal gains. You hear that? from cycling, marginal gains, little things that can make you better. And what did we do? I went to America, another coach has gone to South Africa, another coach has gone to Australia, a medic has gone to Australia, seeking little things that we can come back and say to our players, when we talk about being the best, when we talk about wanting to be the best, doesn't mean we'll get there, doesn't mean you do. Sport is tough and harsh and you do it in the public domain, but life is tough and harsh the whole time. All you can do is to make yourself better. And I'll come back to what Will said in his talk about the collective, because that's the why you do things. When you talk about being the best and why you have a massive opportunity when you're in school with your peers to actually have people and meet people that you will be friends for life. Because there is a collective will. It's when you go outside of that collective that you have within your school environment and you go to representative rugby, representative cricket, into the theatre, wherever people decide to go, that then people's goals become a, a lot more selfish because there's a lot of selfish people in life anyway, even within the school, of what they're driven to. But as you go out, you have to have that collective vision. You have to have that collective vision that people can buy into because that is why you get up out of bed every morning to be the best you can be and then seeking to learn and seeking knowledge through every single avenue that you can get and sucking a little bit of information and saying can I apply that and then we have a saying which comes from British rowing um, can it make the boat go faster which is Jürgen Grobler one of uh, I think he's coached an Olympic boat to a gold medal every Olympic since 1972 and he was asked by a young strength and conditioning coach fresh out of college with all the great ideas and the guy said uh, why don't you have individual programs for your uh, for your your athletes and he said uh, you show me why I should have that individual program you show how that makes my boat go faster and I'll do it otherwise I'll stick to what I'm at <laughs> so in conclusion developing a shared vision to be the best is hugely, hugely important because it's why you get out of bed in the morning and what drives you every single day that you're alive. 
but then doing it and freshening it and revitalizing it through collaboration with any sphere of life. Everything is applicable. We all have the same goals, we all have the same dreams, we all have the same drive, but we use different material to get there. And that's why that's so important. So thank you for listening.